Good morning, family, and welcome to another one of our online services of Redeemer One House Ministry on the YouTube channel. For this is truly the day our Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And we know from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same that our God is worthy to be praised. Again, good morning, family, and welcome to another one of our online services of Redeemer One House Ministry. We're here at Redeemer One. Our mission is simple, to convey to all of God's children that His sovereignty is still sufficient, that His grace and mercy is still afforded us, and that His holy word is still alive and true. We are an inclusive ministry. We stand firm on what's said throughout the love story of the Bible, that if anyone shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And with that said, family, would you take a minute to pray with me? Father God, we come to you once again with thanksgiving. God, you've been so good to us throughout this entire week that on this day, Lord, amongst all days, we just want to give you glory. And oh, Father God, we just thank you for covering us last week and, and thank you for keeping a mighty hand on the homes of our uh, and the loved ones of ours. And, and also, the Heavenly Father, just keeping a loving hand, oh, Father God, on the situations of our lives. And we ask this morning, oh, Father God, for, for specific prayers, oh, Father God, if you'll just Touch those who've been affected by the, the recent storm along the Gulf Coast region of our land. If you will just keep your hands on them, O oh Father God, for encouragement and for lifting, O oh Lord, and also, Father God, to just increase their faith. And then, Lord, it goes without saying, but we say it anyway, that we thank you for forgiveness of our sins, both seen and unseen. God, we thank you for that you send your only begotten Son to go and shed blood for us at the cross. And oh, Father God, it's just in the mighty name of your Son that we pray this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm so excited this morning to share a word with you. Uh, the word I want to speak to this morning that God has placed upon my spirit, uh, it comes from the book of Genesis, from the book of Genesis chapter 19, and we're going to be reading this morning from chapter 19 verses 1 through 8, but also I want to flip over to that same chapter and read from verses 23 through 32. And this morning, brothers and sisters, I'll be reading from the New King's James Bible version. And his gospel reads, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly. So they turned to him and they entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and they said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them, 
through the doorway and shut the door behind him and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See, now I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. Verses 23 to 32. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zorah. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he withdrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham, and sent out Lot to the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. Then when Lot went out to Zor and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him, for he was afraid to dwell in Zor. And he and his daughters dwelt in a cave. Now the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on earth to come into us in, in this custom of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him that we may preserve the lineage of our father. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand true forever. Uh, brothers and sisters, this morning, the Lord has placed the word upon my spirit. And the word is, our baggage left unattended is still our baggage. Our baggage left unattended is still our baggage. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, prior to this great, great storm that we're in, COVID-19, it was on an average day, according to the TSA reports, that within this country, we averaged about just over 2 million flights per day. Prior to this current storm of COVID-19 that we're in, we also had an additional 200,000 or more flights international. Over 2 million some odd flights domestically per day in our country. And brothers and sisters, as, as we reflect on those astronomical numbers, uh, the one thing that sets into my spirit is that uh, those passengers who were, were on those flights had two goals in mind. The passengers of those flights, I would, I would argue to say this morning that the first goal was that they got to their destination 
safely. And then I would follow that argument up by saying that I, I know that their, their next obligation of travel would be that their luggage and their baggage arrived to the same destination. Brothers and sisters, it's, it goes without saying that no system is perfect. It, it, it goes without saying that sometimes things get misplaced and mishandled. So it wouldn't be out of the immediate norm to understand that some of those baggages did not arrive to their assigned destinations. It would be uh, an easy comprehension for us to, to understand that uh, with those bags not arriving to the assigned destination, that it would become feasible for someone else unknowingly to mishandle our baggage. It, 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 it would be, it would be uh, presumable that uh, someone else who may have encountered the mishandling of our, our baggage could, could very well make assumptions of who we are based on the exterior of our baggage. Oh, brothers and sisters, it wouldn't, it wouldn't baffle me one bit that, that, that some folk are, are quick to judge and they're quick to make assessments just about the, the outer portion of baggage. Oh, but brothers and sisters, there's something more, there's something more spiritually intense about the nature of baggage. It's, it's known through definition uh, that baggage is simply past experiences that hinder us and they burden us. It's, 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 it's understanding in the concept of what bad baggage is in the, in the uh, application of our lives is, is something that on the outer surface uh, we can mask. On the outer surface we can glamorize. On the outer surface we, we're, we're able to marginalize and we're able to, to, to create a false a representation. But it's within the interscopes of that baggage uh, that we understand the, uh, uh, the, the hindrance and the, uh, the, 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 the burdens that, that the baggage transport. And brothers and sisters, as the, uh, the messenger said earlier this morning, that baggage left unclaimed is still our baggage. And brothers and sisters, I would, would like to share with you this morning that that same internal baggage, even though well uh, 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 covered and well uh, masked on the outer findings in the and the, the outer representation, even though, even though well masked, that our baggage can show up in several places of our lives. Uh, our baggage can show up in the emotive state of our lives. It can show up in the emotive state of our lives where our emotions lie and, and how we deal with emotions. 
It can show up in the emotive areas of our lives. Uh, it can show up with, 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 with why and how that we respond to, to others uh, from the emotional standpoint of our lives. And then also, brothers and sisters, the, uh, that internal baggage uh, can show its face in the interpersonal state of our lives. In the interpersonal state of our lives where we, we have these relationships with others. In the interpersonal levels of our lives where we have these romantic relationships with others. In the inter personal relationships of our lives is where we have these levels of friendship and 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 and, and those who want to become near and close to us but also brothers and sisters that internal baggage even when left unclean even when there are no hands raised to identify who the baggage and the burdens belong to, it can also show up in our spiritual state of our lives. And brothers and sisters, in that, that spiritual state of our lives where it shows up, it's, it's, it's us having full understanding how we fully grasp who God is. Brothers and sisters, it, it'll show up in our spiritual lives in terms of do we understand God's love for us? Do we recognize that he has great mercy? That he has unmeasurable grace? That he has a agape love that only he can exhibit for his children? Come on, somebody. It's in that spiritual state where the burdens of that internal baggage will block our understanding as to how we receive God. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, this morning there is a remedy. Brothers and sisters, this morning there is a there is a healing for baggage. Uh, the healing for baggage, uh, brothers and sisters, it it comes from the Word of God. Uh, the healing of baggage, brothers and sisters, that comes from the Word of God is 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 exactly what the Bible illustrates in First Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians 1 and 30, it says that, that, that in God, only by God, Christ was given to us. Christ was given for us so that we would embrace righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me say that once again, that, that God's word explains that, that the healing that is needed for the internal baggage, it comes from the relationship with God. That God said that his only begotten son, and it is in him that we can only receive the righteousness, the holiness and the redemption. And so, brothers and sisters, this morning I want to take some time and I want to I want to be mindful in the spirits that 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 the Holy Spirit will use me to 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 teach and to to thoroughly explain the healing process of baggage. Uh, the healing process of baggage, brothers and sisters, is first is done through a uh, sanctification. 
It's a sanctification, uh, brothers and sisters, where God has specifically consecrated and set you aside for a purpose. Sanctification. It's sanctification, brothers and sisters, where we know and we, we acknowledge and we, we receive the fact that God has consecrated us and, 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 and specifically set aside our lives, our individual walks with him uh, for a purpose. And then, brothers and sisters, in that sanctification, to get to the healing part of the internal baggage, there is forgiveness. Now, brothers and sisters, let me be the first to say that forgiveness is a process. Let me be very truthful today as I stand here before you that, that the Bible says forgiveness is a process. Uh, the word of James 5 and 16 says to to bear your burdens with your brother. But then it says to pray. And after with the prayer, it says that the healing shall come. Oh, family, let me say that once again. The Gospel of John, the Gospel of James 5 and 16. In the Gospel of James, it makes it very clear that, that forgiveness, to get to this healing place of this internal baggage, God makes it clear that, that there may be those who, who pretend that they can forgive so instantly and so simultaneously. Uh, there may be those who can tell you that someone could cross them and could try to destroy them and attack them, that they could just have forgiveness in a matter of seconds, but I'm here to tell you this morning, oh, brothers and sisters, it is in us to forgive, but James 5 and 16 makes it clear that forgiveness is a process. There are steps involved. There are principalities. There are things that have to go through protocol. Uh, there is an agenda that needs to be followed in order for us to get to the place of healing through sanctification in this area of forgiveness. Help me, Holy Spirit. We're going to have to understand that there is a process to be followed. And now, brothers and sisters, in the, the interim of the process, where you bared your burdens, where you you prayed for your enemy, where you you've asked God for the the healing of your soul and the healing of your spirit. In the midst of that process, brothers and sisters, on the other side of that, you need to have understanding of who, the what, and the why. Brothers and sisters, we, we need to have understanding of who this individual, this, this attack, who were they at the time of the attack? And who not referring to their financial disposition. It's not referring to their social security number has nothing to do with their physical home address. It's related to the spirit that they were operating in in the time of the attack. For it's in that spirit, brothers and sisters, that the mercy and the grace that God's giving us, we're able to see why that person attacked us. Why that person allowed such evil things to take place in our lives? Why did that person condone some of the things that we know were hurtful and that they were uh, things that were repugnant and things that were counterproductive in our spiritual journey 
in this pilgrim land. We want to, we want to know, we want to investigate, we want to see what that spirit is because I can tell you, brothers and sisters, once you have identified that spirit, you will understand that that spirit needed nothing but grace and mercy. Come on, somebody. And then, family, it's the, it's the what? It's the what, family? It's the, it's the, what was this person's intent and motive behind their act? What? Uh, was it something where they were attacking out of fear? Uh, was it something where they were attacking out of jealousy and envy and strife? Was it something, brothers and sisters, where uh, in their attack they were only attacking you because in their own lives they were broken? You want to get to a place, family, where you understand the what? Because once you understand the what, all of the the, the identities that I have uh, described, all of the, 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 the labeling of the spirits that I have indicated, it tells you that this person, the reason that the who and the what uh, 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 lined up for their attack was only because they didn't have a relationship with the Father. They did not have the right relationship with God. This is what God shows us as we go through the process of evaluation. So we understand the who and the what. And then comes the why. Why were you the target? Why were you the example to be made? Why were you the, uh, the one who who, who was minding your own business, who was keeping to yourself, who was someone who just tried to do good by people and do right by folk, why were you the target? And brothers and sisters, the reason you were the target, I want you to get this this morning, is because God knew that for the attack made by the enemy, God was going to sanctify you and in this sanctification in the internal baggage of your life, he was then going to set you aside for your purpose. I'm teaching this morning. Brothers and sisters, I want to say that again. When you ask the question, why? Why me? Why, why, why am I the one battling this pain? Why am I the one feeling that I was abandoned? Why am I the one this morning feeling that all these attacks just will not stop. Why? Well, brothers and sisters, the why is very simple. God said what the enemy meant for your destruction, he's going to use it for his purpose. Come on, somebody. Brothers and sisters, that why, that why, that why, that why is the reason that we're in this Christian journey. <laughs> that why is that God has shown us through a process through a process of understanding that once we understand who they were, we understand what that they were up to, the why is the reason that we love God so much. It's the reason that he said that I have set you aside for his purpose. And my brothers and sisters, again, I want to make sure this this title of purpose is clear. Baggage that is unclaimed is still our baggage. A baggage that has not been set before the feet of God and ask Him to reflect the process of healing, it's still going to be our baggage. Oh, I don't care how you dress it up. I don't care how you clean it up. I don't care how you exacerbate it. I don't care how you uh, bring forth all of these new different 
exposed and it's been disclosed to others. Because, brothers and sisters, as you turn your Bibles with me, you see here what it says. It says in verse 31 of chapter 19, it says, Now the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come into us as the custom of all the earth. Brothers and sisters, this internal baggage did not stop with locked. It never does. Uh, this internal baggage did not stop with the fact that uh, even after the, the angels of the Lord had went over to visit Abraham and they had had a feast with Abraham in which they gave Abraham a blessing of great news and and upon leaving that location and coming into Lot's location and, and conveying warning over Lot to protect his family, even with all of that that was done to, to help and protect Lot, that his own wife, his own wife looked back. She looked back to the baggage because she knew that the baggage meant more to her than to lay down the baggage at the foot of God. See, God had already warned her. God had already made it clear that do not look back. Bring it before me. Come before me. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Come before me. Bring the baggage before me so we can deal with this eternal baggage. And brothers and sisters, if you reflect on the verse that was just read, now that same spirit that Lot's wife possessed, this spirit now is a family spirit being ex exploited and being exposed and being discussed amongst Lot's own daughters. This same spirit, this same spirit of damaged baggage, internal damaged baggage, that has never been addressed. They make it clear. They make it clear, brothers and sisters, in layman's terms. They make it clear that, that the baggage has never been addressed. The process has never happened. The forgiveness has never taken place. Therefore, the healing is nowhere in sight. Come on, somebody. And so, brothers and sisters, this morning, my purpose for this message that God has placed upon my spirit is that we need to understand that it doesn't matter how we cover it up. The baggage unclaimed is still our baggage. But there is a healing for it. And in that healing comes with sanctification. It's a sanctification that the Bible speaks about when, when God gave his only begotten son. And so God wants you to give your life over to him. He wants you to turn your life over to him to set your life aside so that he can use you, so that he can heal you, so that he can restore you. But also, brothers and sisters, we understand that it doesn't just happen by night. Uh, we understand that the Bible makes it clear that there is a process. And so, brothers and sisters, my prayer this morning is that we stay true to the process. And brothers and sisters, I want to, for this entire month of October, I want to acknowledge a testimony for each and every Sunday, just related to this, this entire month of breast cancer awareness. But in this testimony, if I could share it with your brothers and sisters, it says, it says, Miss Tawana Smith, who was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, is now cancer free. 
It says here that Miss Tawana Smith, who was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, she says, and I quote, she says, I'm cancer free and now I can see the roses. Miss Tawana Smith, who uh, some had probably counted her out, they didn't know her God, they didn't understand her faith. Uh, Miss Tawana Smith says, she says, now she says, I'm in my purpose. This same, this same godly creature, uh, this same woman of faith, Mr. Warner Smith, she says, uh, maybe they didn't understand the power of my God, she says, but my faith in God has made me stronger because it was my faith in God that healed me. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, that's our topic this morning, brothers and sisters. Our topic this morning, though it is related to our baggage, it's more related to our healing. It's more related to our healing and getting into the process of our healing, understanding how that process works. And as was, was stated by the messenger this morning, that the first step of the process is to know God. So it's on this day, brothers and sisters, I encourage you, if you don't know Jesus Christ for yourself, I pray and ask that the day be a good day to do that. I pray and ask, brothers and sisters, if you'll just confess with your tongue and you'll believe it all in your heart that he died, that he was buried, and that he was risen for our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. If you prayed that prayer this morning, brothers and sisters, I welcome you to the kingdom of the Lord. I pray as always that this word was a blessing to your spirit and that you'll be able to go out and be a blessing to others. Have a good day.